I want to begin this morning by reading the colic for the week, which is proper 27. It's the colic that was introduced this past Sunday and uh, could be used to guide your prayers throughout the week. It's found on page 236 of our Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, it was your blessed Son who came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. And so grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, and that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So I, last Sunday, was the, got the opportunity and the privilege to preach at St. Paul's uh, in the rotation. And on, for that Sunday, I, I did a St. Hilda's story. I checked in with our friend, uh, Mama Scrutch, uh, Mother Emily Scrutchens, uh, who's the chaplain at St. Hilda's Episcopal School in Cheyenne. For those of you who don't know, it's, it's a made-up story. It is directly inspired by Garrison Keillor's Lake Wobegon stories. And uh, I always enjoy doing that. And I have to confess, I enjoy a little bit when uh, members of St. Paul's uh, find out later that it's a fictional account. They th that you, that some people think that it's an actual place and that she's an actual person. She's actually a, a, a combination of two priests in our diocese. Uh, Father Art Scrutchens, who is the head chaplain at, K at Holland Hall School in Tulsa, and then uh, Mother Emily, Emily, Emily Schnabel, uh, Mother Emily Schnabel, who was, who was the, the, the priest at St. Christopher's in Midwest City, but she's now a uh, priest at St. Martha's uh, up in Omaha, Nebraska. So, but all that aside, uh, the passage I chose to weave into that story was the, the Hebrew Bible scripture, the Old Testament reading from this past Sunday. And what I didn't do is I didn't talk at all about the gospel. So I want to read that to you today. This is from Proper 27. This is from Matthew chapter 25. It's from last Sunday. So Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. And as the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. And then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. And later the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Here ends the reading. Jesus wasn't nice. And I could be wrong, but my sense of him as I read him throughout the Gospels is that Jesus was not nice. You could say he was kind, and, and that would lead us to a, a discussion that in this, in this mode would be one-sided, but we could have a discussion about what, what is the difference between uh, niceness and kindness. But when Jesus tells us a story like this, I think that at the heart of it is 
is kindness, even though it sounds stern. And here's why I think that. Jesus takes you and me seriously enough to tell us to create, to craft parables like this, to give us warning about what is good and right and just in the world. And those are things that we should pursue. And what is harmful and can do us harm. Because as I, I've used the language God as a dream for us, and it's to live a, a life well crafted. Right? And it, it contains certain things, and it involves certain things, and God wants that for you, and he wants that for me. And so when he tells a story where he's giving warning about not doing that, I think that's an act of love. As I talked about a couple weeks ago, uh, David Sapper and I got to serve on a jury together, and which was a surprise to us. We, we went down there together, so we ended up in the same pool because they just take in one after the other. And when, I, when we got into the jury pool, eventually they got around to asking, does anybody here know somebody else in this jury pool? And we raised our hands and we told them how we knew each other. And uh, they, when they found out that I was David's priest, they asked him, uh, Mr. Schapper, do you feel like your priest would have undue influence on you that if the two of you disagreed on something that, uh, that you uh, couldn't maybe have your own unique uh, opinion? And David said uh, no, that he didn't think that would be a problem. And I have to tell you, I was a little disappointed. Uh, I wanted David to say yes, he has in incredible and, and undue influence on me. Anyway, but that's just a, 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 an aside. One of the things I thought about as I was serving on the jury duty is this idea that when you administer justice, you really want there to be two sides to it. You want there to be, you want to say to people, we expect something from you as a citizen, and you have stepped outside the boundaries of that thing that we expect you to do. We want to hold you accountable for that. Because when you do those things, we can't have a healthy functioning society. In fact, they use that language in the, in the penal code, in the, in the legal code. They talk about the health and well-being of the state of Oklahoma. The other side of that, though, is we want there to be mercy so that when we do fail, when we don't live up to what it is that, that is healthy and gives us well-being, that there are people to give us grace. I think that's the heart of the interplay of Christian faith, is that balance between holding ourselves or others accountable and giving grace to ourselves and to others. Um, in fact, in the, in the collect that we prayed at the beginning of this, there's really language twice in it. The language is making an appeal to God to make us like him. You know, we want to be made like him. And you almost hear in the language of it, um, can you do that work to me? Because I can't seem to make it happen. I can't do it. And I think that's the case with finding the right balance between accountability and grace. In fact, I really believe that grace isn't grace unless there's something that somebody hasn't lived up to. Is that the difference between being nice and showing kindness? That kindness both gives substance to something and expects something from people. And then when that doesn't happen, there people are willing to show love and to give people a break. Right? Whereas niceness, again, maybe I'm just, you know, I'm just playing with words here. I don't know. But when Jesus says to us, Collect your oil, have it ready, I'm coming. And when I come, I want you to be ready. We should be a little afraid of that, but not too much, just a little. I mean, knowing that he lo he, he's loving and gives grace. But when we do that thing, when we collect those things that, they're, that those things are really pointing toward, 
we're going to find that it's going to lead to a life that's abundant and joyful and thoughtful and has all the things. I say this, and I suspect that Mom Scrutch uh, would too. I say these things to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.